difficulty and if we fail to do that properly, that's where you find that area of potential dictatorship, potential megalomania. That's an exaggeration. Uh, it is to the interests of supporters of the monarchy to emphasise and exaggerate legal difficulties, particularly constitutional legal difficulties, with a view to making them appear to be so complex and complicated as to amount to a serious obstacle in the way of a transformation to a republic. But I don't think those difficulties exist uh, in the way that the monarchists suggest that they do. It will be difficult, if not impossible, to replicate completely the present uh, arrangements under a presidential system. But don't we have the wit to have a constitution that will provide for stable government in Australia that does not have a foreign head of state? Oh, I'm sure we have, yes. But uh, whether we would adopt such a constitution uh, if we convert it to a republic is another question. I don't think that the change from a monarchy to a minimalist version of a republic would mean much in terms of fundamental change to our constitutional structure. But I do think it would mean a great deal symbolically. Why? Uh, why? Because I think it is important, both from the point of view of Australians and from the point of view of people outside Australia, that Australia should have, as its head of state, somebody who resides in Australia and primarily identifies with Australian aspirations. There is something odd about having, as your head of state, the head of state of another country, a person who doesn't reside here and primarily identifies with the goals and aspirations of that other country. Will you solemnly promise and swear